So it's another week, and that means an in-depth view into another market. Hello, everyone. Monty here, Market Analyst at IG, with our second technical cheat sheet video, where we take a look at key technical indicators in order to formulate an overview so we can prep those strategies, whether you're a conformist or a contrarian, as well as those levels, whether on the weekly or shorter-term daily time frame. And uh, while not a sentiment study video, we are going to take a look at where traders stand, which is an interesting one for this product, as well as fundamental considerations that might throw a wrench into those key technical indicators. And for this week, we've gone for a tricky one. USDJPY is price oscillating as of doing this video near the 150 line. Now, in terms of looking at the technical indicators on the weekly time frame before we get into the daily price above its main weekly short and long-term uh, moving uh, averages, weekly moving averages with the DMI that a uh, bit of a margin, but I want to say even though there's uh, the DI plus is above the DI minus, still not significant enough in order to tilt this one to positive and ADX that depending on, I mean, it's usually 20 to 25, we're looking at a trending range, but in this case, still not quite there yet. An RSI that's beneath overbought territory and price still a climb away from getting to the upper end of the band. What about in the daily time frame? Price also above all its main short and long-term moving averages for the daily. Uh, DMI in this case can flicker between positive and neutral with relative ease with, with its DI plus above its DI minus, which I've put there. Charts, by the way, courtesy of our trading platform and an ADX that's out of trending territory and falling an RSI beneath overbought and price coming off the upper end of the band. So looking at this snapshot in terms of the daily, you can go clearly there's some positive technical buys, maybe not a bull trend given we don't we've got an ADX uh, that's not in trending territory just yet, but maybe something like a bull average or something like that. But here's the thing, we're oscillating near the infamous 150 red line. And that means we need to take a look at what happened before to give ourselves some historic technical consideration before formulating the overview. So doing things a little bit differently this time because of this product. But last time we got to 150, that was in October, 2022. You can see what happened afterwards. There are some other items that happened, which I will get to. Second time it happened, October 3rd, 2023 got volatile by the way and afterwards uh, but then it started to creep back up and you had ourselves a move uh, higher and it actually stayed there for about four weeks before we got another pull down which wasn't as, as heavy as before but was significant nonetheless and the most recent one was on February 13th and since then it's been hovering near that level now here's the thing every time it gets to 150 uh, you start to see policymaker talk and or action in terms of talk whether from the finance minister Japanese finance minister or its currency diplomat about you know monitoring uh, the FX moves with urgency. You know, we don't want excess volatility. It's not about a level. It's, it's about excess volatility, even though it usually is and usually ends up being a, uh, more about the level as well as potential intervention. Uh, the other item to note is what happened in this case, which kind of came to their aid in the sense that we had a pullback when it came to underlying yield spreads. That's the U.S. 10-year Treasury versus its Japanese counterpart, which has been relatively anchored, even though we did have some, some uh, yield curve controlled uh, tweaks uh, on the on the tenure out of the Bank of Japan. So when you put all these things together, it means that an overview starting with the weekly, that's a bit more volatile. I can understand how looking at some of these, you might go, this might be more consolidatory or cautious consolidation when looking only at the technical boxes as well as where price stands, um, uh, you know, without looking at the, 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 the 150 red line, ignoring that. But owing to historic technical considerations as well as underlying yield spreads and the overview, it's a bit more volatile. And that means that on the strategic front, the narrative is, breakout versus reversal, conformist strategies being um, buy breakouts off the first resistance, sell breakouts off the first support, contrarians being sell after a reversal, not a significant one. This isn't a cautious consolidation overview like we saw with your USD, but selling after reversal off the first resistance or buying after reversal off the first support. Of course, you do want to know if something, whether something significant has happened before going for a reversal, whether you're going for or against, but it also is a matter of that even if price manages to hold here for a few weeks, for example, that eventually it isn't going to settle here. So the idea being that eventually it's going to break or shift away from these levels because this isn't an area that they're generally comfortable with. So in terms of uh, the RSP, by the way, to, to the first resistance, the first support, because you might, this is for the weekly time frame. So if you're looking at this a week or two from now and you want to set them up again, we do have these levels released every week with the, with the weekly market report uh, out of IG, but you have a 160 uh, point gap and for between the first and the SL of about 80 though when it comes to the first to the to the stop loss SL stands for stop loss you, you know you can change those at your discretion obviously the goal is you want to try and, and look at it within your risk uh, reward what about on the daily time frame now I will get to whether or not to those who think it's a stalling bull or bull average what the strategies would be but if it's volatile same concept the narrative is breakout versus reversal if you're a conformist or you think no you're a contrarian going no 
that I don't think it's a volatile overview. I think it's something else. We can always we can either agree or we can uh, respectfully agree to disagree. Uh, that's fine. That's the whole point. The idea is that we want to get an overview. We want to get those strategies in as well as putting in that structure with those levels. But if you are for a stalling bull or something bullish, that means conformist strategies are going to be buys. Contrarians are going to be sells. Conform buys as in buying after the first support. Uh, buying uh, at the first support after reversal or going for a buy breakout, whereas contrarian would be selling after a reversal off the first resistance or even a sell breakout strategy off the first support level. And the relative starting point, this is for the open. This can obviously change throughout the week. Um, and, and this is this you'll see the updates on the daily market report, but essentially a RSP to first on the on Monday of 63 points. And afterwards for the SL, again, at your discretion for the stop loss of about 31 points. But if you're taking, if you look at this and you want to set it up on, say, Thursday, if you're not, if you're not receiving the report, then maybe you want to tweak those numbers up because it might be a bit larger and especially taking into account whatever, if there are any fundamental items that could easily change that. Um, so what about clients going into this? I know we don't want to spend too much time on this, but there is some there is something interesting to note this time around compared to last time it reached 150. Uh, clients on our end, heavy sell. It has dropped week on week to 73%. COT speculators, heavy buy USD JPY. And this right here is changing JPY yen longs, not USD JPY longs. So they they raised their yen buy buys, but they raised their yen shorts by a whole lot more. And that's taken it to a heavy buy 74%. Near almost exact opposites. And just plotting this onto a chart, green dotted for COT speculators, blue dotted for, for clients on our end. As percent long using the left axis with this 50-50 red dotted line right over here. So whenever you see the dotted line above, it means the majority buy. Whenever you see the dotted line below, majority short. You can see throughout this entire period of time, COT speculators, majority buy above the red dotted line the whole time. And when it comes to clients on our end, majority sell below the red dotted line the entire time. But look at COT speculators. Majority buy, and you know what, initially got to 150, and then afterwards they started to raise it. You had momentum coming in thinking, okay, you know what, it's holding over here. That means that going for, they're anticipating further gains. Bam, it, it dropped. That was a nasty squeeze. This time around, far more cautious. There's still majority buy, still raising it, but far more cautious compared to where the buy buys was last time around. So this is one of caution from them, and as well as from clients on our end. They were shorting into price gains, especially at 150, anticipating to hold. They were right. It came back down. Shorts got out. Longs initiated. So the sell bias went from extreme sell, around 20%. Uh, what that means is major minority buy, 20%. And extreme because this is as percent long, so they were long twenty percent, which means short eighty percent. Price price uh, price came down. They shorts got out, longs initiated, and price went up again. And this time around, back in heavy sell territory, but nowhere near the sell bias that we saw last time around. So they too are also quite cautious. What about on the fundamental side of things? And again, this is just we're trying to look for something that might throw a wrench uh, into 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 technicals. We do have a holiday in the U.S. Uh, for Monday, you got the minutes releasing on Wednesday. Remember, we're looking for something out of the US that, that's going to shift underlying yield spreads as well as the greenback. You got preliminary PMIs on Thursday. Uh, and when it comes to Japan, by the way, not much. There's a holiday on Friday. You, they also have preliminary PMIs on Thursday. Um, one thing to note was the mood has been a little bit bearish just because they're in a recession. A preliminary uh, fourth quarter GDP uh, came in uh, worse than expected and a surprise contraction. That means they're no longer the third largest economy, though. The next key item that the Bank of Japan is looking at is wage talks, the upcoming wage talks. So far, market pricing via LSEG, anticipating the Bank of Japan is going to raise rates from negative 0.1% to 0% in April, but very close to a coin toss. It's not going to take much to, to, to tilt those, those probabilities. Whereas for the Fed, the story was before that they were going to cut in March, you know, back when things were a bit euphoric. Uh, then it got pushed out to May. And now, um, courtesy of CME's Fed Watch, um, via majority anticipating that the first cut's actually going to come in June. So that's about it from our end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do let us know if there's a market you'd like us to cover. Good luck out there. Happy ticks. <laughs>